welcome to the Sports Bar Show. Chewing the fat and talking balls, as always, here on the Sports Bar Show. Lots of talking points this week. There's been a lot going on uh, off the field. Of course, nothing going on on the field, uh, um, unless you're uh, further up the football in uh, Pyramid, that is. But uh, I'm Steve Brown. Alongside me every single week is uh, the manager of Baker Borough. That is Brent Peters. And uh, we will be chewing the fat over the next 40 minutes or so on a couple of uh, topics. But... Uh, First of all, as I always say, what kind of week you have? Uh, well, this is the kind of few days I've had. Are you ready? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the weather girls. Listen, what year were this? It was 1987, 88. Last week it was snow. Deborah will do a check. Check for us. What were we doing? What year were it, Deborah? I'm going for about. 87. You've got to guess the singer. That's uh, Jerry Hall, that. That's uh, Jerry Hall. Who's Jerry Hall? <laughs> Jerry Hall. Jerry Halliwell. Who's yeah. hey, Jerry of the Pacemakers? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, from Spice Girls. Uh, yeah. Anyway, go. yes, it has been a raining uh, couple of days. And I've had a leak on my conservatory, you know, for the last. Uh, ooh, Eight nine months. Well, not being funny. There's this bloody and it's still the shortage out there. Go and get somebody to go and get it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be all right to leak it up in a, in a, in into a, a, into a cup. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to be talking about? Because you've got your you've got your notes here, uh, but lots of uh, lots of talking points, Brent. What have you got on your list? Oh, I haven't mixed up to you. you, you you're you're the. Uh, you're well, I want to talk about what, one thing that I want to talk about, which has been on social media. A lot this week is. We can't the, talk about this, can we? Because oh, I know there's none of that going. On. I, I don't even know what that is now. I'm, no. I'm, you know what is it? Oh, it's a, it's a round ball. Romeo. What is it? It's like Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean the cigar. Uh, no, but what? Oh, way off. Five years off. Eighty-two. Uh, Raining men, weather girls. No, I want to talk about. The survey that was sent out this week. Because, oh no! You no, know, we're not going to. We'll just talk about it briefly. So we're going to touch upon that because I know Ollie Bayliss has been talking about it. Everyone else has been talking about the survey, which has uh, been sent out to all uh, non-league clubs. Uh, also, uh, what else has been on the radar this week? Because you've got a few papers here in front of you. Oh, listen, them papers. Let me tell you, are because. Uh, I kind of, uh, I'm in a little bit of hot water, but listen, what's new? <laughs> yeah, what's new? It wouldn't be the same, would it, if you weren't? Uh, no. no, no, no joking apart, this survey, right? I'm in a little bit of hot water, well, were, but I, I think I've uh, kind of uh, calmed the waters a little bit. Yeah, you've built some bridges across I've, the water. I've built some bridges, but listen, it, it's, it's, it's difficult when you're, <clears throat> when you're kind of, or anybody out there will understand what I'm trying to say is when you're a leader in terms of your occupation where you're you, you're a team you're, you're managing a team or you know even in employment in, in, in kind of industry where you're managing a, a shop floor yeah. or anything people have got decisions to make and people have got to take leadership and when things happen, and what's happened, I know it's, it's a very, very extremely difficult time, but when things happen, like what's happened, and we're getting, we've had a survey pre-coming back to the season that we've filled in on the eventuality of yeah. the season having to stop. Yeah. We've already done that exercise. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you get another survey to fill in, which is basically in some a lot of ways, not all the same questions, but majority are the same questions yeah. that we've already done pre a ball being kicked. It kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit because I'm thinking, blimey, when you're a leader, you take leadership, take ownership, yeah. make decisions. Yeah. For goodness sake, not I don't... Every, not everybody's going to like the decisions, but that's why you're a leader. Well, exactly. That's what I'm trying to get at. You're a leader, take leadership. We've already done an exercise previously before a ball was kicked. And in my opinion, whatever the outcome of that survey was at that time would, in my opinion, given a, a more balanced, correct 
situation of what would happen if uh, in the eventuality what's happened where uh, the season's come to abrupt uh, it's been abandoned at the minute yeah you know it's you know we're just where we are mm. and when we filled that survey in I think that would give people because before a ball would kick that would give a balanced situation now unfortunately right in my opinion when they're sending a survey out now even though we're only some teams are only uh, nine, ten games in, some games aren't like us. We are not even ten games well, in. Three, three games. I still think that when you're asking the same questions or similar questions, you're not going to get the same balanced view. No, no. Because once a season starts and you're asking clubs, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry if uh, you clubs out there. Uh, feel I'm being a bit hard here when I say this, but I'm telling you, anything that I say on this show, when you ask me a question, I'm looking at it from a football perspective yeah. and not about my own club. Yeah. Right? I'm looking at for the benefit of football in general. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that are only looking at it from where their club is at that particular time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting you now because so the, of course the, what they would have put in a survey at the start of the season would have been a lot different to now going off their own personal circumstances. Well, yeah, because because let's be honest, free a ball being kicked, you're going to talk from the heart and say in the eventuality of uh, we're being stopped again. How do you want the season to be conclu concluded? Do you want it to be concluded on a, a null and void, points per game situation? Yeah. How do you want it to be concluded? You know, and then it broke it down to percentages. So in percentages again, so if it were if it were kind of the first quarter of the season, if it went there, you had to make a decision on this survey uh, what you sh think that should happen. Right? Yeah. You follow me? I'm with you. Now, what's happened is they're asking this very similar questions again. They've already got the answers, in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah. What, what, what my point is when, when, all right, I'll come to something else in a minute, but on this subject, they've already really got the answers. So, this is my point about leadership. If you've got the answers, nothing, it's happened. We, whether we like it or we don't like it, we've come to a stop. Yeah. We don't know when it's going to start again. So my point being, those that's already started, as we have, like other teams have, and all the leagues across the country have started, there's points on the board. So teams, are, so the teams that have started, you know, they've collected, the, they've, they've, they've built their squad, yeah. they've seen that they've got off to a good start, yeah. uh, <clears throat> they've hit the ground running, uh, they've got positive points on the board. They want to continue. They want to continue. And they will not want it to be nil and voided. No. Because of the way they've started. So their mindset will be changed to what it would have been on the survey. At the beginning. Pre. Yeah. Because nobody could look in a crystal ball no. and see how you're going to set off. You, you, Everybody believes they're going to do well, but not everybody does do well. No. Not everybody starts and it's the ground running. So... The second survey, in my opinion, that's just arrived is just like, blimey, you, we've already done this exercise. Yeah. You're not going to get a true reflection now. The true reflection is the one that was done prior to kicking. I think so. And, and all right, I'll come to the situation why I've had my hands slapped a little bit, in, in a way, and I'll come to that in a minute. But irrespective of that, this is just the way, because I come back to this leadership business. The reason why I've had is because... If I think you're not doing your job right, I'm a, I'm, I'm a leader. I'll come and tell you. Yeah. There's no personality clashes. It's just, no. I'm telling you, you're not it's, doing it, your job. And destructive. this is the reason you're not doing your job right. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. But that's ingrained in me because I'm a leader. I, I like to think I'm a leader. Mm. You follow me? Yeah. So when I see things like this happening, and it's a repeat exercise, I'm, I'm going, goodness gracious me. <laughs> Almost a TV programme. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, what, what are we doing? Yeah. I haven't got... And, and what people don't realise as well, we've all, at our level, we've got other jobs, so I've got a business to run as well. 
So I ain't got time to spend for linking right to another survey out, and especially with that one, well, the scenarios, if this happens, that could happen, and if that could happen, that could happen, and if that could happen, that could happen. I've got to get my head around it all and think, why, well, mate, what's this? Yeah. We've already done it. So my point being, I think this next survey, personally, in my personal opinion, is not the answer, because I think they should be taking leadership. And I'll give you an instance. I'm not going to mention no pubs names, but I'll give you an instance why I'm saying it. Last year, last year, last season, when we nil and voided, when they decided to nil and void the season, when it stopped in match, which was over three quarters of the way through, there was only a, a few games to play before we were finished. So, in hindsight, they could have picked that, then, then few games could have been done now at the start of the season, what we've got through, and that could have completed that season. You follow me? Yeah. Could have completed it. But it never got completed because they made a decision, wrong way, to null and void it. Yeah. So that means they expunge everything. So they've nil and voided that season. Now, in my opinion, the fact that they've done that and they've nil and voided the season, that, may, that meant that the last season was a unique season, going to be a unique season, because what happens at our step, and I'm only talking our step, there was going to be four teams promoted from the, the Northwest Counties North into the Premier League. And there, there, was, there was more promotions, and, and in certain levels up, there were more relegations, yeah. because they're trying to fill in uh, some new leagues that, that they're trying to, to try and get an equal, equal playing field across yeah. all the country. And yeah, the one that the we were talking about that they're hoping to set up uh, in the Midlands at step four. Yeah, but, but also there's a couple coming in apparently at step five as well, which, mm. which, which, you know, I've since found out, right? Yeah. So, last year, had that season had come to a conclusion, four teams would have gone up. Not your normal one. Yeah from our division. You follow me? Mm. Four. So it was unique. The fact that they nil and voided it, that meant going in, that meant they still haven't restructured the yeah. new leagues. Yeah. They haven't restructured. Well, so they going they forward, they to do it, they? correct. So going forward, it's still on the table. So when they pick this season up, the same we're going to apply. There's going to be four teams going up. If they go into and decide that they made a mistake last year and they'll avoid it, which they did, and everybody were up in arms about it. Yeah. If they nil and void if they don't nil and void this season and they go on a points per game analyst, yeah. That technically will upset some clubs are not necessarily upset them but think the chance has gone of the yeah. promotion of four teams because right. straight away and i'll give you an instance what i'm trying to no 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 mention no names but it had come to light did this when i saw a tweet by a chairman in our league not mentioning no names was attached to an ollie bayless tweet yeah talking about what is going to happen when this survey comes the chairman in question put on it's got to be nil and voided for a second season. So I'm sitting back and thinking, hang on, why do, you, why do I think that a chairman in our league has put nil and voided when, it was, when, it, when they kicked off last season yeah. that it was a ridiculous statement, a nil and void situation was ridiculous to make? So my Ed, well, being cynical. No, you, no, not being cynical. Sorry. You let me finish it because it's important that the listeners understand what I'm trying to get at. Go on. So I'm trying to think why would if it were last season was nil and void, and everybody's kicking off because it shouldn't have been, and it shouldn't have been. No, definitely not. Not the amount of games that were played. We've only just started the season in theory, and some clubs haven't really started. But this chairman has put on, and it's there, it's for everybody to see. I'm not making this up, he's put, it has to be nil and void. Again. So I'm thinking, well, we didn't want it last year, why do we want it now? 
But then I think to myself, you know why we'll want it now? And there's nothing wrong in this, and this is what my point is about looking after your own club. Yeah, what we said at the beginning. So, he's looking after his own club. I get it. Yeah. I get it, 100% I get it. But it's not a true reflection. But it's not a true reflection, because what will happen is, and I'm not saying this is, is his thought mindset, you're right what you're saying, I'm being a bit cynical, but I can't think of any other reason why he would want to go for a mill and void. Yeah. When, when everybody last season were up in arms about a mill and Exactly. Boyd. So my point being here is this, when I think about it, so, and I'm looking at it from even, even a situation as a, as a leader of a football club, you build, you build a squad that you believe and you get your management team in place that you believe are the, the group that will take us this season, which is a unique season, i.e. last season, to four, one of the four promotion places. Yeah. So there's a lot up for grabs. So there's a lot up for grabs. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. You believe you're going to do it. Yeah. We will get a promotion. We'll never get another chance like this. We will get promotion. All of a sudden, you get in towards the, the, the final third of the season, the back end, and you kind of, for one reason or another, you're out of the promotion race. You're out of it. It's, there could be reason, loads of reasons. It's like anything. Yeah. You know, Leicester City at the minute have gone to the top of the Premier League, but, you know, they've had, you know like everybody, yeah. they have dreams that they, they want to win the Premier League, but who knows, it's a long season, so they could drop out of it. You know, they, like they did last season, yeah. second half. You follow me? Yeah. So yeah. this team and I'm, this club that I'm talking about, really, kind of fell away a, a little bit. Didn't fall away dramatically, but fell away. They weren't going to get into them yeah. final four placings. They're not pulling up trees as they expected to. So, he's thinking, I think, yeah. nil and void that season. Yeah. We've got another chance. We've still got the four on the table. We've still for got next the season. four on the table for next season, which is this season. Yeah. So straight away, we started again, full of anticipation and, and expectation, and we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do well, right? We're nothing wrong with that. We're gonna hit the ground running, right? So the the club I'm talking about, right? Okay, you know, it's a long season, so they could. If the season run its course, be one of the teams challenging come the end of the season. Yeah. Could. I wouldn't write them off. No. However, all of a sudden, which we predicted, the season wouldn't get off the ground as soon as the winter must come in because it had come to a stop. Yeah. We've proved it. It has come to a stop. And Covid would kick in. And, and Covid, and COVID would kick problems in. for every team. Now then, we stop here. This is important. You listen to what I'm saying. So... We're now in a situation where the season, as it's kind of, everybody's unsure what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. The fact that last season, they nil and voided it, the chances are they'll run scared of that nil and void because it created a lot, lot a lot of anarchy yeah. throughout the, the pyramid the system. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of teams, they're even legal, they're even, you know, one club in particular got the solicitors yeah. involved. Well, we know that South Shields, you know, the, the guys up at South Shields were, were yeah. concerned about it because they ploughed a lot of money, money into, into it. it. You get me? Yeah, yeah. So, we're sat here now, so going back to what we were saying, so why would he put on, we need to know and void it another season? And it's his opinion, and I don't, this, yeah. everybody's got opinions, but it's, there's a point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. So from this point, he, he's put on an Ollie Bailey thing. It's got to be nil and voided for a second season. I'm thinking, why? Yeah, well, I'll, tell yeah, you, I'll tell you why, I think. Why? Because if it gets nil and voided, for, at the, as it stands at the minute, he's out of the race. He's out of any promotion of the four clubs. Yeah. As it stands. Because it's been stopped. Yeah. If they nil and void it, right... And it gets null and voided. Same thing will happen. The chances are the same thing will happen going into the third season. So he's got another. He's got a third buy to the cherry, yeah. and so have other clubs. By yeah. the way, yeah. we're not. I'm just trying to tell you what I think that why these why people would come, come to uh, a, 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 a null and void situation. Yeah. So he's then got thinking. This has to be null and voided. But all he's thinking of, he's not thinking about football across the spectre. 
he's thinking about his own club. Yeah. That's all he's thinking about. Nothing else. Right? So what he's doing, he's saying it's got to be nil and voided. For his own, because he knows if it's nil and voided, that structure that the FA want to put into place will have to be carried over. With four teams getting promotion. promotion to the third season. Otherwise, if it continues, he's going to miss the boat. He's going to miss the boat as it stands at the minute. He will miss the boat. Yeah. Because if they go on a points per game as it stands at the minute, he's mm. way out of it because I think they played more as many most games in the league or one of the clubs with the most teams in the league and they're, at, uh, they're about 10th in the positions yeah. but they don't come in to the points per game system where they'll take them up yeah and that's why going back to your initial point that's why you were asking the fa to take leadership based on the first survey because that was a true, true reflection. reflection that's my point that's my point because what they'll get now is what we've just said People look it's at their false, own clubs and, they'll, and it's a false outcome because they will vote or put down on that. It's not a vote anyway. No. It's a guidance. But they will put and place what they think is best for their club to get them. To, but, but if they go on a points per game, as it stands, yeah. right, if they do go on a points per game, that club or that chairman I'm talking about... Isn't it, in the mix. It's not in the mix. So, in this is, so, so if they do go on a points per game... He's out of the equation. Next season, it starts on a we a clean sheet of paper, yeah. so that's how it starts. So it might be back to one promotion place, maybe two, yeah. and it's harder to get up. Of course it is. Yeah. So that was your that was your point, really, wasn't it? That they, they should point. go off the first survey because that's a true reflection on everyone's thoughts. Yeah. For football purposes. For football purposes, I could be cynical here and stand here and say, let's go for points per game, but, but it's not right. But you didn't. But I haven't done, and I won't do. No. Because it's not right. In, in it's principle. There's a principle. Yeah, yeah. It's all for football across the spectre. Now, where I got me, because people are wondering, why did you get your hands? Because immediately, I'm telling people to take ownership. Yeah. I'm basically saying, I am not wasting my time filling a survey in what I've already done. Take ownership, take leadership, go back to that survey. Now, I, I, listen, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm big enough, I've got broad children, you know, if I think I've overstepped a mark somewhere, I will be the first to apologise. Yeah. I don't think I've, I've overstepped no mark because I bullet pointed. You've your even re seen your reasons. Yeah. I, I bullet pointed everything. It was the last line. Yeah. The last line, probably. Where you upset somebody. Where I've upset somebody. Because the last line, basically, we aren't mentioning any names, basically. But it didn't name at one person. It said, if you guys aren't capable of taking leadership, then you should resign. Yeah. Now, that comes back to my, in my as a leader, yeah. if I'm not leading and, taking, and, and, and trying right. to find other people's opinions. Then what is your purpose? Well, what's my purpose? I shouldn't be a leader because I'm going asking somebody else. Yeah. Take leadership, that's what I'm saying. Now, it goes a little bit deeper than that because yeah. from that, I found out the structures of everything. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, and to me, it is interesting it, it's kind of not fit for purpose how it, how it is at the minute. And yeah. this is why it, it's kind of all, all clouded. And this is why it's frustrating where we can't get to firm decisions and there's always two in and fro. Uh, don't go anywhere because we're back straight after this short break where we're going to continue with the uh, the structure of the leagues and talk about uh, more here on the Sports Bar Show. Welcome back to the Sports Bar Show, chewing the fat and talking balls. When we left it, Brent, we were... Discussing uh, you getting your uh, wrist slapped slightly, but you uh, rectified it straight away. But a lot of things came out from that that you weren't aware of. But you are now. Yeah, but right. What, what I'm going to say, the reason why I got my wrist slapped was 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 the last line where it. But it it, it, it kind of may have been missing. I'm telling you, it was because it wasn't yeah. aimed at any person. It was the word, I, I, I was talking about if you can't take the lead. And this is named at the Northwest Counties, by the way. Let's no, get one thing straight. They've yeah. been absolutely fantastic of the Northwest Counties in all this. But they can only go so far because it goes above them. They yeah. can only go so far. Yeah. But it was pointed out to me that it, it and, and kind of who I actually sent the 
uh, emailed to, it was actually pointed out to me, like, um, it, 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 that he's employed by the FA, um, but he doesn't make the decisions. No. Right? Now, this is where, kind of, when I've got to the bottom of the structure, it, to me, it, it's just ridiculous. Because what kind of happens is, so you've got three people that, that are employed by the... Um, they're employed by the FA. So you've got James Earl. Now, apparent for all intents and purposes, James, if you tuned into this, you know, I've got to tell you, you you've got absolute glowing, glowing r reports, references have come to me via the Northwest Counties League. Of, of, and this is on behalf of all the clubs, may I say, that, you know, the chairman of the Northwest Counties League, the Vice Chairman of the Northwest Counties League, the Secretary of the Northwest Counties League, have all basically told me, and these are people I respect because I've worked with them a, a, a long, long time, that you have, have gone moved boundaries and gone out of, uh, out, out of your way to be uh, supportive and helpful during these very, very difficult times and, 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 and co may you continue to do so. And, and what... And, and, I've also been said, you know, you've been on hand even out of hours when people, other people won't be accessible. You have always been accessible. And for that, and on behalf of the clubs, I've got to say a massive thank you. You know, if you tuned in, it, it's brilliant to hear that. You know, and any, anything that you received off me, that bottom line, you know. It Rip it up. It, <laughs> it wasn't there that you personally. It, well, it, well, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. But moving on. So we've got James. So we've got, we've just mentioned it. So you've got James... Earl, who's employed by the Football Association. You've got Lawrence Jones, who's on the same part uh, uh, by the Football Association. And you've got Matt Edkins, that's employed by the... And them three are kind of uh, controlling the non-league system. And controlling, I say, with a point. Because unless I'm getting this... And I'm hearing it right... They don't, they're not the decision makers. They're the kind of, the best way I could probably describe it, you know when you go, well, uh, uh, you know when you're in a, 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 a magistrate's court, you know, you've got, you've got magistrate, me and you could be a magistrate, but we don't, we're not really all fair with the law, yeah. right? So in front of you, you've got, the, you've got the clerk of the court, yeah. right? The clerk of the court doesn't make decisions, but what the clerk of the court does, he advises the magistrates yeah. the rights and the wrongs. In legalities, yeah, that's the best way to put yeah. it. So yeah. probably these three are kind of that situation that they, because away from them three, apparently decisions that are made at the for the non-league system are made by, um, from what I can gather, is is made by a group of a body of people which is kind of the alliance. Uh, what they, they call the alliance group, the alliance league, and it's made, it's by a, a group of it's by a group of people, and so them group of people could be connected to football clubs like down in the south, or chairman of the football club, or yeah. or or chairman of the league down in the south. They're made up, yeah. right? And from what I can gather, a lot of those that sit onto that 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 committee. I think our sports lady, from where we are up here, is actually based in Kent, <laughs> right? Now, from all intents and purposes, yeah, she's good. Right. She's good. Even though it's, 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 she's distant. She's distant, yeah. but she's good. I'm being told she's spot on. Yeah. Right? But what I'm trying to say is the makeup of, 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 uh, uh, of, of how, it, how it comes to that. So the league committees are made up of the alliance committee, what they call the alliance committee. And and what happens is these committees, so so you kind of, your James Earl, the Lawrence Jones and the Matt Adkins aren't decision makers, the guiders and, the, and, the, and, the, and they're working. So the decision makers are, who will, who will say whether it's nil and void or come to that conclusion it's nil and void, are that committee. Yeah. But that committee is made up of, like I've just said, you know, and we've really not got no representatives up here, apart from the person I've, I've just touched on, mm. 
who sits on that, but apparently she's very, very good. But they're the group of people, so from their decision at their decision-making meetings, it goes, these three, what I've said are employed, they will be the ones that are the go-betweens between the FA Council at the FA and all the, all the leagues throughout the country, right? Yeah. So they will pass, so these body of people from the Alliance Committee, in the way I'm looking at it, they're representing all the clubs at, uh, from step three, I think it is, right down to step seven. Mm. You follow me? Yeah. And then the decision, so last season's nil and void would have been made by them people. Yeah. And from that situation, they would have been report that would have been reported back to the FA Council, who have rubber stamped their decision with you. to null and void the season. Yeah. You follow me? I'm with you. So it's not so the what we thought initially that the decision was made by three individuals. That's not the case. It's no. done by no. an alliance or a committee of a body of people. Correct. A further one which is quite interesting, apparently the current rules of the setup, not just of the Northwest Northwest Counties League and other leagues, have got to follow work within the perimeters of the 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 rules of the football association for the non-league system. Yeah. So they're set. So again, I stand to be corrected, but this is the way that I'm I'm learning it. Is so for instance, if the Northwest Counties League have 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 got to, have got permission to run with a certain number of teams in their league, they can't on their own bat extend that to another four teams, two teams from each division, without being rubber stamped by the football association. They can't do it. So basically, what I'm saying, yeah. they can't. They yeah. can't do it. So, so the things that's what everybody on social media going on about that yeah. there aren't everybody's yeah. answer tied yeah. because, and one good point that was brought to me yesterday, was. What should have happened last year when we were on lockdown and it went nil and void? What the FA, and, and I'm not talking about the, the this alliance committee or anything, what the FA should have done at, at the, you know, the, the, the body from, from the FA should have done, the council at the FA, they should have put provisions into the rules and changed the rules subject to like like an insurance policy does, yeah. you know, you cover for an insurance policy, but if there were a blinking war broke out, yeah, they're not going to pay you. Yeah, it's in the small print. You get me? Yeah. So basically, they should have been pre-warned and last yeah. and made sure that they put in a, any. If this was to happen again, there needed to be a clause in there. There needed to be something in. There hasn't. They haven't done it. No. So. It's not James Earl's fault that they haven't done that. It's not Lawrence Jones' fault they haven't done that. It's not Matt Atkins's fault they haven't done that. It's the committee, it's it, the body. It, it, it's the body, it's yeah. the, it, and it, but it's the council. Because yeah. the FA council should have looked at that and realised, oh, hang on, we, sh we, need to have a, we need to have a look at all this setup yeah. and have a look at it. And yeah, there could be a scenario which might get us to another null and void situation. Yeah, so we need to look at it and be prepared for it and have that set in our rules. Now, the certain things that I'm being told that are in the rules don't allow. So, for instance, it doesn't allow to go beyond 31st of May. doesn't allow. The rules don't no. allow them. So all these leagues yeah. can't make decisions. And even that body of people, what I've just mentioned, can't make that decision to go beyond. It has to go. So where does, so where does that decision... Let's say, for instance, say, you know, we, we have another lockdown scenario or we go to Easter and there's still no football... Yeah, we still want to conclude the season. Is there a, a possibility of going beyond the thirty first? Well, only the only well, the only way that can happen is that has to be be put in, implemented, and agreed by the FA Council, right? Which the FA Council, like them people I've just talked about, and no. the Alliance Committee. There's a lot more on the table. There's a lot more. It goes beyond. Now, this is where I personally, this is only my personal opinion, where I think this is where I think now. In my opinion, if this could happen, there is a lot wrong 
And it's only when you have a, a pandemic like we've got that you need to look at a lot of things and a lot of things need to change. I mean, it's no surprise, and this isn't having a dig at the FA, by the way, but it's no surprise. If you, if you follow football, even at the highest level, and you listen to what's going on with the people in the game like Gary Neville and people like that who have opinions and strong opinions and they, they, they understand the, the gearing and the workings of the game, you'll understand that Gary Neville has teamed up with um, Mr Bernstein, who used to be the chairman of uh, Manchester City, yeah. and, uh, and some other people, and they're banging the drum about there needs to be a kind of a reform at the FA and a rethink on a lot of strategies at the FA. That's why they're banging the drum. Now, I'm not standing here and saying that over years, you know, there's obviously something not right within the FA. I'm not saying that because I'm not privy to the full facts. But it, it, there's obviously something not right when good people, I call them good people in the game, that are good people in the game, have left the post within the FA. Mm. Left the post. Gone. Yeah. Right? Why have they left the post? There's a reason why. Now, it's not for me to guess. Yeah. It's not for me to do anything. But one of the good people were obviously Mr. Bernstein. Right? Now, they're trying to have a, a reform of the FA for that. They're not bothered about, well, right the way through, but they're not really bothered about the non-league. Yeah. They're more bothered about the structure of how it is kind of at football league level and, and, and the Barclays Premiership. Yeah. So equally, we're interested in the non-league and how it, how it all pans out at the non-league. Mm. So in my opinion, this is only my opinion, would it not be more sensible now to have a look at the old structure? You know what my feelings are. I don't agree, to start with, with committees as committees. I think you should have heads of departments mm. that run that department, mm. leadership, lead the department, and from that leadership, if they need help or assistance, they bring them in to help and assist. So you're a leader of the head of media at Bakup Borough. If you need help in all, all what, what head of media entails, you bring in under you and you're under me. Yeah. So the line goes down from me to you, well, to you across on media. And from media, the line goes down with whoever, how many people you want under you. Yeah. They're directed, you're, they're directed under you, to you. Yeah. If you need something critically urgent, major, to carry out your duties... Or it's going to cost brass. Or it's going to cost money, yeah. you come up the line to me. Yeah. We talk about it, mm. me and you, and we come to a conclusion, and then we see A and A, mm -hmm. or we meet each other halfway, yeah. and that's what happens. So... Mm. Could, and I'm only asking the question, and it's food for thought, could this situation similar not happen with the through the, 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 the pyramid? So in other words, let's take away this FA's committees that are made up of uh, the leagues, leagues and made up of the uh, alliance committee. Let's take them out of the equation now, so they're not in it. So they don't have no decisions to make. We don't want them. No. We don't want that committee. What we want is more of... Because I'm sure that people like James Earl, Lawrence Jones and Matt Edkins have been vetted by the FA or else they won't be salaried. Yeah. And they're more than capable of and making more decisions. And they're more decisions. Quick decisions. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. So, should we not have more of the likes of them heading... Areas of responsibility. So they then, it's them that go back to the the council. Yeah. Not nobody below, they go back to the council. Now, my point is, so let's just take Lawrence Jones, for instance, and look at the, the structure, and we'll take out of this the National League. Just take out. So we'll go from three down to seven, and it's all across the country. Now, if that's too much for one person to deal with all step six clubs or step six and seven or you could work in any other way you want to or step five and six if that's too much for one person then split split the areas yeah. so in other words let's take james earl he runs this side of the country step five and six yeah uh and then we'll take 
Lawrence Jones, middle of the country, Matt Adkins, right side of the country. Yeah. So any club league, so our league, so if that was to happen, our chairman, Paul Lawler, would representing the North West Counties, would communicate, would communicate, the communicate for the benefit of the North West Counties League. The North West Counties League might be totally different and want so totally different things than uh let's say the one in yorkshire where brighouse play yeah. tool, station. tool station they might want totally different but it doesn't matter the boss and i'll say that in inverted commas mm. the head of the lead is still james earl so james earl's chat to paul lawler might be and decision making to paul lawler totally different to the chat we we'll have with tool station chairman and the decisions that the tool station yeah. want now they'll come a stage where so when we're in this pandemic now so if they want all the opinions of the clubs under the jurisdiction of say james earl he collates that information through all the varying chairmen in his line yeah he reports back to the fa council direct direct same thing with lawrence jones yeah. Same things with Matt Adkins. Yeah. From that, the leader of the chair of the council mm. sits with those three guys and, makes a, decision. and makes a decision, but he might not be able to get it rubber stamped without going to full council, but then he goes to full council, that chair of that full council, goes to full council and says, we've collated all this evidence from all across the country yeah. i have had meetings with the leaders of those heads of those groups and this is what the concept of opinion is and from that the fa council make their decisions whether we like it or we don't like it that makes more sense because to me when you've got but I, I like it because it's smooth and it, it's fluidity it, but, it happens very quickly it's a quick right. process. But for me, the trouble is, it's all like, all that. There's too many people and involved. And there's too many people involved. And the trouble is, down at that alliance committee and the leagues committee, I'm not being funny, we go back to the conversation we had in, in the first half of the show. They have their own agendas for their own clubs. Yeah. These people, like James, Lor uh, James Earl, Lawrence Jones and Matt Adkins and anybody else who's heads of them, uh, uh, that situation, they've got no vested interest. No. They, 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 it's not none of them are their clubs. Yeah. Where if there's where you've got chairmen of other other football clubs, there's a conflict of interest. It's, it's, it's natural. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Paul Lawler, if Paul Lawler, if Paul Lawler were to sat in that, I'm not saying he wouldn't be fair. He would be fair, but he'd lean yeah. strongly towards the counties. Yeah. Because he's going to do. I just think it. I just think it. It needs a complete independent. Independent. It needs doing away with, and I think that will run better. And because let me put, let me final point on this, and let me just say something about this to you, right? If look, I've got a distri little distribution business. Little distribution business. It's like for twenty years, it's just a couple of lads work for me. For twenty years, I've been in at TNT. I've got a great relationship. I like to think I have anyway with TNT. The now it's TNT FedEx. It's like amalgamation going on or takeover. Uh, we ain't getting into that. Yes. Yeah. I could. I've been in. I've been in that game a long time. Now I could go in that. I could watch them and how they run things. And I could turn around in my head. I won't do that. I don't agree with that. But it's none of my business. No. I'm. I'm employed by them. I'm happy to get. A, I'm happy to get a paycheck yeah. from my staff. And you do X, Every Y, and Z, and that's And I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Whether I like that they've got to wear a, a uniform, and if this is how it is, and regimented and how it is, got to be this and the van's got to be this colour, and, and this, that, and the other, it's got to be washed every day, and this, that, and the other. So be it, so yeah. be it. I have to do that, or otherwise, I'm sorry, if you don't like the way that our terms and conditions and how we work, you go and find and go and work for whoever else, but yeah. you're not in here. Now, to me, that structure should be the same. If Baker Borough doesn't like how 
they're doing things. The North West Counties League, because because it, on the on the I, I, the things are being done, right? We've either got to move or 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 stick and be religiously not fight them. Yeah. Stick with with what they're doing and if you look at that structure that i've just put in place in a small way you won't re realize it but i've been with the northwest counties where, where i've been in football not just at bake up borough for a long long number of years when there were bass yeah, northwest I mean, counties yeah, going back a few with years. another club yeah. so when i was with glossop that's when it were with bass and the way this league has grown and transformed and gone on and been and gone from a, 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 a small acorn where they've gone to a massive tree which is very success yeah successful league and the people who are running it are, i know we don't always agree i know when a fine comes through and clubs go mad and they'll, they'll talk to one and this is another thing this is why I, don't, I try not to get involved with other clubs because there's too much shit going on next to the french behind yeah. people's backs backstabbing i call it yeah. snakes at the end of the day, they have a job to do. At the end of the day, they do it. At the end of the day, they find me like they'll find the next person. Well, if you've got any questions, you just go straight to the author's mouth. Well, that's it. Yeah. I don't not mess about. I'll yeah. just ask a question. And if I don't agree with it, we might have 10 minutes of like infighting on phone. Yeah. A or bit of van bags. But a bit of van bags. <laughs> but then at the end of the day, it's, it's called like a day, I think. Yeah. Well, and when I think about it. Respect and I've got loads of respect for them. And I mean loads of respect. Yeah. Now, so this is my point now. But if you look at it, they've done exactly what I'm saying. They're in a daft way within the league yeah. because they split things up. They can't run and do the. They can't operate this league like they operated thirty years ago no. because it's grown. They've got more teams involved, and, it, and it, there's loads more responsibilities. Oh, yeah, with the north and the south and the and the prem. Correct. So what they've done, a little thing like, listen, we can't wait till there's a. Uh, First, sat, first Wednesday in the month for a meeting, we'll get an emergency committee formed that's accessible. Because every day, this used to be a bone of contention with me. If I'm here at this club on a, on a, on a, on a two o'clock on a, on a Monday, and we've got a game tonight, and there's something catastrophe happens, and I need to be, I, I need to be accessible to somebody, not an answer form, no. I need to be having a questions because it's critical because if I don't get this right, what I need to do in my administration or whatever, mm. it, it could have detrimental effects of minus points yeah. or whatever. So it's important you need contact with somebody. But that somebody you're contacted with needs to have a responsibility that he can make a decision or very, very quickly, if he can't make it, he gets to the other committee that can make them decisions as a collective bunch. Yeah. So in a in a way, what the Northwest Counties have done, they've done it say because they've now formed a subcommittee, which is the emergency committee, away from the main body of the committee yeah. to operate that. They've also gave decision making to a point, providing that the person who, like say for instance, the fixture secretary, they've given the fixture secretary ownership of that department to be able to do things on his own back without having to, without come back to keep going backwards and forwards to a point as long as he's working within the realms of how the league want it. Yeah. If he if he if he goes away from the realms of how the league want it, he will get dragged over the coals. And he will be questionable. But to a point he can't now if there's something happens that somebody throws something at, at him that, that that might be well, that's how that I really can't answer. I'm a bit unsure about that. Then he goes to the emergency committee that he's accessible to, and they'll say, "No, you can do that." So then he can. So it's done. Yeah, it's done. It's massive. There's no messing. About so the it. Northwest Counties, in a small way within their group, have done what I'm trying to say, but yeah. I'm telling you that, that yeah, the FA yeah, should we, do yeah, that. We've not done that at the top level of the game. No, and that's what I think should happen. Interesting. Plenty of talking points. We are going to be talking about the Vanarama National League after this very short break. Well, welcome back to the Sports Bar Show. Chewing the fat and talking balls, as we always do every week. You can download the Sports Bar Show. Uh, Mr. Peters has said he'll put another one on. I have not put one on for a while, but uh, I will be putting uh, some new shows over the next few days on Spotify and on iTunes. You can simply go along to them platforms and download the Sports Bar Show. But we were 
We were chatting there, interesting uh, topic of conversation regarding the FA and the North West Counties. But I want to talk about now, we're going to have a little chat about the Vanarama National League. I know there's a lot of talking uh, going on at the moment. There's meetings taking place, I believe, today at some point regarding uh, the Vanarama National League. And the fact that the clubs were, well, hoping that it was going to be grants that they were going to be receiving. Of course, not having to pay the grants back. But I believe, Brent, it, it's going to be in the, in the shape of a loan, which has mm. kind of uh, <coughs> caused a few problems. Well, yeah. It, and ruffled a few feathers. Well, it has. I mean, listen, before we start, I, I'm not around the North, I'm not around the Vanarama National League, uh, and, I, and I, you know, it's kind of going out of my comfort zone here, but I can only talk in, in how I see things. Yeah. That's all I can do. And personally, like I would be saying at our level, uh, given what's going on out there and given um everybody's struggling and given the, the, the you know there's a lot been taken away from all the clubs um i feel that if they're helping football and there's so much criticism goes on and has gone on for many years that why does the money at the top not filter down to the money further down the pyramid and, and further you know down at the bottom in some ways it does it does it's not 100 percent that it doesn't there is there, it does come down probably not at the magnitude that it should but mm. it does now personally what am i going to say i'm going to say it should be a grant all day long with what we're yeah. facing yeah i think the issue is that the uh, 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 certainly at, uh, <laughs> at the national league they've banged the drum to be because they want to be an elite they wanted to carry on playing football, yeah. which they've been allowed to do, because they're classed as an elite, and they've argued and banged the drum that it's elite football. We're elite. We're fo you know, we've got big contracts. Yeah. We've players here. You know, obviously they're a full-time club. A lot of them. A lot of them are. A lot of them are full-time clubs. And when you think about it, it, when you think about the way that the pyramid structured, so obviously you get football league clubs that's current will drop out and go into the national. Uh, Vanarama League, so they'll, yeah. they'll drop into it and vice versa. So you've got like some a, a team, like we you know it, it could be Rochdale, it could oh, be Wrexham, 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 and yeah, they, yeah. They, they they can drop, could drop down. So the I I kind of think that the the Vanarama National is an elite. It, it, it's kind yeah. of it, it's kind of on the shirt tail because of the to and fro that takes place between the two. Yeah, where I think there's a distinct problem here. Is, is that at step at level five and six, which is step one and two, the Vanarama National League, so they've got league, operate obviously the one lower that feeds into the Vanarama League, which is the north and south. south yeah. Now, because they bang the drum as a league saying that we are elite and they've got it sanctioned. Are they kind of penalising the smaller clubs or the lesser clubs or the less financial viable clubs within their league, the North and South divisions that aren't really ready on a lot of things yeah. to be involved in the National League, if that makes sense. It does, it does make sense because the money just, the money's just not there. Well, you can get a promotion from the Northern Premier League or the Isthmian League or the Southern League, and it goes into the, into the National North or South. South. Yeah. Right. So, because you've been successful as a club and got um, and won the championship of, let's say, the Isthmian League, and you 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 go into the uh, South Division of the National League, but you're still operating part time. You don't really have the same calibre of gates that the National League. Oh, the infrastructure is not the, there. So, it? so you're not getting the gate. But yeah, everything about it, because you, you run under the same body of people that are arguing that we're elite, yeah. it's kind of arguing that they're all elite, but they're not. So, no. they, so people, so it, I think it has a detrimental effect with some clubs by being classed as elite. And the, and the things that the elite clubs have to put into place, I think that those clubs are going to find it extremely difficult. So, personally, 
and I don't know if this could ever do, be, uh, could ever happen, I kind of do agree. I think that the National League committee, I think they should be standalone because they're on a promotion. National League, I'm on about at step yeah. one. I think that they somehow should be standalone or under or involved with the EFL. Yeah. And the reason due to, due to the fact they've got these infrastructures in place already and they they are working like a professional club. Yeah, because obviously you've got professional clubs dropping down into that national league and you've got clubs who are aspiring, like you say, you only have to go back a couple of years, Salford City. Yeah. That luckily they've got a billionaire at the back of them. And forest right? greens and all that. And all them, them. They've they're structured that they could potentially no problem go into the football league. Yeah. But I'm not so sure, and this is not being in the way out looking, I'm not so sure, like, at this moment in time, a Chester City is ready to yeah. go back. Or a Curzon. Or a Curzon, they're ready to go up. Uh, 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 and be in that situation, I don't, I, I kind of don't. So why should, and I'm, I'm, because, I mean, of the I'm finance, talk, because of the finances. Because of the finances, that's what I'm saying. So I don't think that they should be, that those sorts of clubs that are kind of striving to get to the top, of the National League for prom to, to be promoted into, they're not kind of ready yet, yeah. financially or otherwise. And I think that if they want to be classed as elite, I think the National League, as in the Step 1 League, yeah. they stay as elitist and move on into the because they feed into the Football League. But I think North and South should be classed as non-elitist. Yeah. Because then I think it will help them on the financial. But then, but then loans have to be. That's why them loans need to be granted. Because otherwise, the clubs that are operating in the Vanarama National League North and the South, because they're grants, they, they've, they've got to be grants. They can't exactly. They can't afford to pay the money back. No. So what they're looking, they're blinking again because they're looking when they're making these decisions. They're looking at the top teams in the top in yeah. the top level. They're not thinking what's below there. But. Even this is what I'm trying to. This is what I'm trying to say. The national north and south are kind of the national league. It's all they're all in bed together, but financially and gate wise and everything else, they're not kind of ready or not. Some are obviously some are, but you've not got a painted as some are. Yeah. You've got to look at the bigger picture, and that's why I think, in some respects, the na national league banging the drum to become elitist so they could carry on playing and, but that brings its own issues with it where they've got to be still have the same format well, as the it. EFL clubs yeah. so so kind of they've made a rod through the back there but that is kind of in my opinion harming or potentially harming the lesser clubs yeah. that are in the north and south yeah and yeah. I think I think if they want to be classed as elitist, and I know the, some of the clubs in the North and South will disagree with me, because it's great to feel like you're elite, but I think they may, maybe they should come under the, 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 the jurisdiction of the Premier League. Yeah, I agree. Personally. Ollie Bayliss has been on social media, as he has been over the last couple of weeks, uh, doing a really good job as well, is uh, Ollie. Uh, significant National League meetings will take place this afternoon. Mark Ives, the interim a general manager of the National League will meet with the clubs from each division. They'll go and share opinions on whether clubs are willing to take on the loans in order to continue the season. I don't think he's going to have much luck with that because I think most are going to say, no, we don't want loans. We can't operate on loans. It's got to be a grant. Matt, let me tell you about Mike Ives. I've, got, I, I've had lots of dealings. I thought Mike Ives had actually uh, left the FA because Mike Ives, uh, was, uh, he's been in the FA for... Yeah. 20 years he's a good good man Mark Ives he is a good he knows the game inside yeah. out he's the interim general manager at the moment yeah. isn't he? National League. he's telling me about Ollie Bayless he's doing a good job but he hasn't done that right good job he hasn't told us who's his blinking uh, mole <laughs> is that, has it? Ollie where, who's your source who's your source <laughs> listen, not that you're going to we, we know listen. we know <laughs> you don't know Brent Peters but listen I will find out believe me yeah we will find out who the mole is. Anyway, going back to Mr. Ives. Go on, you were going to tell me about No, Mr. I was just Ives. telling you that he was head of, uh, he was like head of discipline. And, um, uh, but 
I, I mean, he got, he's got another title. He's got until whether the FA. I, I mean, I don't know. I could be talking out of turn here. Whether talking balls. Whether whether the FA, because I know for a fact, because I'm kind of connected with him. Uh, and I'd seen a put because I went. You know what I'd like. I went because I sail close to win sometimes. You do. You do. And I went. Oh no! When I saw the announcement. Oh no, Mark. What am I going to do now? Because Mark is the person. Again, he's been accessible over years. If I've had a problem discipline-wise, yeah. or one of my players has, he's always been there. Not me personally, but he's yeah. always been at the end of the phone, and he'll always talk to me and tell me if I'm right, wrong, or indifferent. That's what you he's want. He's a good bloke. He is, really is a good bloke. And I went, no, you're joking. What I'm going? Who am I going to go to now to bang things off? So I thought he'd kind of left. So whether, but it says entrance, or whether he's yeah. just been brought in, because listen, yeah. he's very knowledgeable. He's a good guy. Yeah. Well, we'll probably uh, talk more on the next show. As I said, you can go along to Spotify and iTunes. Pick us up there, the Sports Bar Show. Uh, we'll also have all the videos that you can uh, watch on our YouTube page and on the social media platforms at Baker uh, FC Media. And if you are a local business or a regional, national business and you would like to sponsor the Sports Bar Show, then do get in touch, media.bakerboroughfc at gmail.com. Uh, send us your details, contact number, and then I'll give you a call, and we'll have a chat, and uh, you never know, you could have your name in that corner, just up, up there somewhere, but uh, pleasure as always. Cheers, Brent. See you next week. Hang on. It's on. Go on. Okay. You know what it is? What is it? It's the start of raining men, but... It's I'll, taking too long. I've messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on at the end, don't worry, I'll include it. <laughs> <laughs>